Hey guys, today I want to talk about Blanchard Racing Team. Blanchard Racing Team did not have a great year in 2023. It wasn't terrible. Todd Hazelwood did a great, great job in Adelaide, drove the car up to the front, qualified in the qualified in the top 10 at Sandown, came fourth at Perth. It seemed like it was possible for those races to happen, the good races to happen, but there were other races where it was just like they were nowhere. Sometimes I guess that's just what it's like when you're a a one car team this year they're going to two cars they've got rid of todd hazelwood unfortunately i don't know if he was pushed or if he jumped they've signed james courtney who should be very good experienced drivers are usually very good for new team usually that's what you want but i'll tell you what premier racing didn't really have any experienced drivers like they had chris pither and james gary jacobson and james golding in their first year and they seem to be doing fine so blanchards started off really well in 2021 when they struck out by themselves they had tickford car that was pretty sure it was the same one that won the 2017 sandown 500 but i don't know 2017 sandown 500 winner sold the 23 red for 2018 they converted it into a mustang for 2019 it carried over in 2020 and that car was driven for most of the season of 2020 by james courtney with boost mobile backing because of the the way that all the wrecks and things unfolded that car was actually uh, phil monday's car he owned 23 red racing so and he think he i think he still owns that car so they got tim slade they got they got Mirko de rosa they got brendan hogan they had their tickling car and they qualified in the front row at bathurst and they were periodically impressive over the next two years in 2022 they had a djr engine in a tickling car which is interesting but that's a a bygone era of the sport now 2023 came along they didn't really change anything they built their own car for 2023 they signed todd hazelwood because uh tim slade had gone to premier racing they just had a rough a rough year of it and Mirko left mid-season apparently a few other people left mid-season um they've had a bit of a turnover in terms of staff in recent in the last year but they have signed james courtney They've promoted Aaron Love, who was with them in Super 2. They have signed, is it Kate Harrington, who was the uh, Super 2 manager for Tickford. She's not now going to be the manager for BRT. They've also signed uh, Raymond Lau from Tickford. The thing that confuses me is they've got three cars for 2024. They've got the card that they built for 2023 that Todd Hazelwood drove. Then they've got the wild card that they built for Aaron Love and Jake Kostecki for Sandown and Bathurst and then they've bought the trading Mustang from 2023 that Declan Fraser drove last year so they've got two BRT cars and one Tickford car I don't understand why they think that that's something that's going to work in Neil Crompton's book Best Seat in the House he said that at 00 Motorsport Craig Lowndes had one car and then Neil had a different car and the data and the way that the cars behaved everything about it did not correlate they you do one thing on craig's car and get one result and you do the same thing on neil's car and would get a different result you just couldn't compare the two cars so i don't understand why they think that a tickford mustang is going to be the same as a brt mustang there's a few things that have sort of been hidden don't seem to be talked about much they say that every camaro is the same every mustang's the same but that's not true something that barry ryan talked about about why erebus was so successful in 2023 they got their best suppliers involved in getting them the parts and things that they needed to make those cars work so not every car is the same because there are little changes that you can make there are little things that you can do to make those cars different from one another it's probably not as massively different as it would have been for gen 2 but in gen 3 there there are slight differences and we saw last year slight differences seem to be a massive difference where if every camaro seemed to be faster than every mustang and managed to get to the end of a race better not every camaro is the same and not every mustang is the same it is likely that premier racing's camaros are the same as triple eights you know i think blanchard racing team might find that declan fraser car might behave differently to the brt cars because they weren't like they're they're built differently they would have they would have to have been built differently unless they got all the exact same gear 
and it was all done exactly the same way. There are a tiny little differences that might show to be bigger. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that tradey car and the other two cars that they've got. I guess Blanchards now actually own their own cars rather than what they had in Gen 2, which was they were driving Phil Monday's Mustang. So they'll have one of those as a spare, and then they'll have two, one for James Courtney and one for Aaron Love. Presumably, James Courtney would step into Todd Hazelwood's car or the Trady Mustang, and Aaron Love would continue driving the wild card that he drove last year. I don't think it's fair to expect that Aaron Love would, would do much better. I, I, I don't think... It, it would be fair to expect much from Aaron Love. It's a new team. There's so many things that have changed. We're just going to see how close he is to James Courtney. And that's all we're going to see. And if he shows improvement across the year, then that's a good job. For JC, they would expect him to be as good as Todd Hazelwood. But they do have JC for 24 and 25. So it would be interesting in that regard. But I think for the mo- for the most part, they are investing in Aaron Love and they're making sure that Aaron Love is going to be the future of their team. That's why they put him through Super 2 in their car, the Phil Monday owned Mustang I think, um, and put him in the wild card, have promoted him and I don't know if he's on a two year deal with JC. If things don't work out with JC and he doesn't do a good enough job, Aaron Love is still the future of their team in the same way that Matt Stone Racing is back in Cameron Hill to be the future of their team. Almost every team has got somebody in their driver lineup who is young, coming through, and is going to make a difference for their team. I think only Team 18 don't have a young guy in the wings. So Raymond Lau is going to engineer one of them, Aaron Love or James Courtney. Maybe he'll engineer JC because they knew each other at Tickford, but also maybe they just got to work out who's, who's going to be best positioned. It depends who the engine, who the other engineer is. If they get a less experienced engineer, they would probably put him with James Courtney because JC has so much experience, he'll be able to manage it better with that engineer. Whereas Raymond Lau has experience with Thomas Randall. Maybe maybe he'd be more suited to a younger guy. Don't know. But I think that we all expect that Blanchards will be the worst team on the grid in 2024. And that's not because they're terrible. It's because this is where Todd Hazelwood was last year. And we haven't seen this car as a two-car team, so we don't really know how they're going to perform. We know we have expectations of James Courtney. We know we have expectations based on how 2023 went, where Todd Hazelwood delivered some good results. So we expect that James Courtney or Aaron Love will deliver some good results. It wouldn't be surprising to see them come last because it's going to be a bit of a building year for them. And they've got Jack Perkins as well. Um, joining JC and Jack seems to believe that Blanchard Racing Team is going places. Um, he said in his interview with Supercars Talk, he didn't believe in the Team Sydney project. Uh, he didn't follow JC to that team and then only lasted Adelaide and then after Adelaide, JC left. 23 Red went under and so Jack was out of a co-drive and had to find a seat. Had to work out what he actually wanted to do with his life because he wasn't going to be in a top line car. He seems to believe that Blanchards is a good project. And I think there is a good amount of optimism around that team, but I guess the, the people who were in the team, and you don't know what went on behind closed doors, if um, it was just a personal thing, like some people had to go do stuff and weren't available to be part of the team, or if the team was managed badly and people left. They're still getting a fair few people coming to coming to the team. So it can't be the worst situation in the world. I'm sure James Courtney had options other than Blanchard Racing Team. He probably should have been in the Matt Stone Racing Car. Yeah, those are my thoughts on the Blanchard Racing Team for 2024 and a little bit of a history of the team and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's all I got to say. I just thought it'd be interesting to talk about the Gen 3 cars as a mechanical thing and how they're talked about like every Mustang's the same and every Camaro's the same, even though it's not. That's all I got.